Well, I feel like it's the first time in a while that we've had this happen, but we actually have some leaks that came out of the Season 2 Reloaded update with some larger implications for the future of Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer, Warzone 2, and DMZ. So as we go along, drop your thoughts below on what you either like or dislike out of what we hear so far, but as well, if you'd like to see anything in the future that isn't necessarily discussed in this video. If you enjoyed this video, you find it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. I'd love to have in the community. And finally, make sure to check out my friends over at G Fuel, where code ESPRESSO can net you 30% off your entire order on certain items through the month of March. But for now, let's jump into the newly discovered leaks for Modern Warfare 2's future. First, on the multiplayer side of things, while it may be a bit more inconsequential to others, it may indicate the themes that we'll end up seeing for upcoming seasons, but we've had multiple operators leak as the game files of Season 2 were loaded. Those new operators including Valeria, Alejandro, and Alex. Now, if I'm honest, I kind of think these are no-brainers when we consider that we've seen seasonal operators introduced as of late being familiar faces, even just if we look directly at Infinity Ward's last game of Modern Warfare 2019, I mean, we had Season 1 introduce Nikto and Mara. New faces, sure, but they were integral to the setup of the factions for the post-launch narrative. Season 2, we saw Ghost, a returning face, and of the lineup that we already knew of, named directly in the campaign, even if not a playable character or in the story until the very end cutscene, Ghost was a familiar face. Season 3, we saw Alex directly returning from the campaign of Modern Warfare 2019. Season 4, we saw Price, as if we wouldn't see Price in the multiplayer and beyond after being the main focal point of the game and Task Force 141 as a whole. Season 5, we saw Lurch setting up Shadow Company. And then Season 6, we saw Farah and Nikolai, again, directly from the campaign. So that's four of the six seasons prior that we saw someone from the campaign introduced, and it's not necessarily a new phenomenon. Season 1 and 2 admittedly have been doing a good job in Modern Warfare 2 at keeping the main faces new, but with so many great cast members in campaign not in multiplayer yet, it's not surprising that we'd end up seeing this. With Alejandro, I believe, stealing the show for the campaign, I think he might have been my favorite character of the bunch, I'm stoked to see him return potentially, and as well, Valeria, beyond how badass her character was, did you see the memes and the reception of her character with launch? People loved her, so if you think Activision wouldn't cash in on that, I think you'd be mistaken. Another one, though, is Alex in particular, because he was notably in not any of the marketing for Modern Warfare 2 leading up to the game's launch, and many players thought that he'd be in the game there at launch, but he wasn't. Now, spoiler alert, if you still have yet to play the raid and you'd like to be fresh going into it when you do, feel free to skip ahead to the next section of the video. But spoiler warning here, Alex was actually finally revealed in the narrative of Modern Warfare 2 and now has a place going forward for the story and the game after he was left a living message for Farah, Alex, and Price in the search of the silo in the raid episode 1 and 2, being spared by none other than Hadir, Farah's brother from Modern Warfare 2019, who escaped prison and now seemingly is Khaled al-Assad, or who we're seeing him transform into narratively. That's a whole different setup that we can talk about at a different day, but that's where the story is going. But for now, Alex is freed from the AQ facility and is joining the ranks of 141 again. So it only makes sense to see him return as a playable character at some point as well. And honestly, that's a pretty well-rounded cast of future characters. The only one that I'd like to see and I feel like was hinted at somewhere, I just can't remember off the top of my head where that was, was Graves, the Shadow Company leader. In Perfect, we didn't see him die on camera cinematic fashion. He easily could be written back in as surviving that tank explosion at the end of the campaign, just like Alex was able to be written back in after seemingly sacrificing himself at the end of Modern Warfare 2019. He'd be another great option, but then it all comes down to how it all work. If there's six seasons, bam, that's every single one of the remaining four. And if there's five, well, then that kind of complicates things. Perhaps Alejandro and Valeria are in the same season due to their narrative ties together. It's not the first time we would see campaign characters being introduced in the same season together, season six being Farah and Nikolai in Modern Warfare 2019. But with their paths being intertwined together in the campaign, it seems like it could be a hero and villain dynamic that we could see, but maybe also one is just saved for a post year one support operator. The door's open for opportunity for sure. But next up, DMZ. With the whole rumor of DMZ light on launch and the evidence of the beta tag alongside all the marketing for DMZ, I figured we'd see progressive rollout of new features, gameplay loops and such, and this seems to be the very start of this because with season two reloaded, we saw the game files indicate a new reputation system coming with barter contracts to allow for a reputation with each faction in the worlds of DMZ, a new trust system, buy stations with rewards varying on your reputation for each faction, and faction sites with faction ground soldiers that will either be hostile or friendly based on your reputation and actions prior, which is a pretty in-depth system when you think about it and is pretty cool for the gameplay loop. 
I mean, honestly, I would love to go into some areas and not just get lit up just by simply walking past certain AI types. I think that'd be really cool. So like I said, I think this is the first step into making DMZ something much bigger. I do think and always have thought that this has potential to be much bigger than your standard co-op or third mode for Call of Duty. I mean, I'm sure you could probably go back to one of our older videos and find a quote of me in one of those pre-launch discussions talking about the leaks like around December of 2021, where I was saying, honestly, the DMZ experience sounds like it could be something that's much bigger to package or too good to be true to be something that is just packaged alongside something else in COD. Like, I distinctly remember talking about how I think that DMZ could have been its own thing standalone. But I do think this is a really cool and unique first step into becoming something bigger, offering newer and unique elements to what we see in DMZ right now, akin to things that you'd see or maybe even expect in games like Tarkov and other extraction-based modes. But I do think this is just the beginning. I think that, at least in my mind, the ultimate goal that I would love to see still would be that out-of-game market and economy, making X-filling with cash worthwhile, use it to buy upgrades for your arsenal, like maybe a medium backpack versus starting with a small, where you have to still loot and actually buy like a larger backpack or something like that in-game, but offering a little bit of benefit jumping into your infill than just having to find and scavenge for everything in-game, but also offering up unique rewards like universal camos, perhaps, for 10, 20, 30 million dollars in banked cash or something like that that incentivizes grinding the game but also adds value to the mode beyond just completing challenges. In-game adjustments like that are always great for the gameplay loop, I think, but to add higher level worthwhile reasons to jump in is always welcome, at least to me. In fact, I think in a video that we have later this week, not sure when this video or the others will be going up in pre-production, the schedule always gets shifted around, but a discussion I've had recently with a few friends and that'll make its way over to the channel here really echoes that. In terms of quantity, we really didn't get a whole ton in regards to playable content for Season 2 Reloaded. We got a new weapon, we got a new map, we got a raid, we got minimal updates to Warzone, but the introduction of new rewards in raids like the camo and other items, the new mastery level grind for the Path of the Ronin challenges, and the still season 2 overarching 100 wins ranked camo, those kind of things have me in a chokehold because I have that fear of missing out on limited time items, especially camos and things that you can use across the board and you'll see in every single game you play, which I'm sure to many doesn't matter, but I'd also wager there's plenty of players like me out there that you're in the same club. We're kind of suckered into grinding out the game here, even with not a whole ton on a larger perspective being added in. And truthfully, it's kind of even changed my perception even. I recognize that there's not a ton of content, but I like having that end goal in my mind for a reason to jump on and play. So we're getting a little off topic, but these leaks I do think provide a good basis for the future of what we could see in DMZ. So here's the hoping that goes then above and beyond what we see with just this upcoming update for potentially season three and then beyond. Beyond that, outside of that, the Warzone offering, we did see additional voice lines added in and additional assets for plunder for Warzone 2. This has been something that's been confirmed for a while now, but I do think it's worth noting that we do see progressive introductions here that indicate that it will be coming. Right now, it's listed as an item officially from Call of Duty as a Season 3 and Beyond item, so it could come with a launch of Season 3, could be Season 3 Reloaded, could be Season 4, could be any time, but we do know that it is coming within the next one, two, maybe three seasons here at the very latest, alongside some other things. Ranked play for Warzone also being one of those as well, though I'm expecting Plunder well before ranked as well. The final thing that we'll mention here is one that didn't come from the game files itself, but came from another fellow content creator, Joe who mentioned movement changes for Warzone 2 coming soon. Now, before we jump into this and what he stated, just know this does not actually mean like slide canceling and everything like that, going back to Warzone one movement like we saw it for the three years of that. Instead, this is more so just sort of animations being ironed out, being a bit more fluid, not taking as long and such. So things like dolphin diving and getting up quicker, going quicker to prone, that's one thing that honestly I would love to see because anytime there's a bouncing Betty you encounter, there's almost no chance that you get out of that unscathed because it takes way too much time to go to a drop prone. So you're always going to be on like this crouched position. So it still has the potential to do a decent bit of damage to you. Other things being quicker to mantle animations, things like that is what I imagine this refers to. But again, not reverting back to Warzone 1 movement. So for those movement kings out there and everything that absolutely loved going crazy on Rebirth Island, Fortune's Keep, even in Caldera a little bit and Verdansk on the bigger map experiences, it's not going to be quite the same, but we'll see some sort of ironing out of existing movement mechanics for that fluidity, it seems like. But that said, 
that's the leaks here that we learned out of season two reloaded and a little bit outside of that so let me know your thoughts down below are you guys looking forward to anything upcoming for multiplayer dmz or warzone anything you like out of this in particular whatever the case drop your thoughts below but if you enjoyed the video you found it at all insightful do me a favor and drop a like on it if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe so don't miss a single thing in all things modern warfare 2 warzone 2 and anything cod related i'd love to have you in the community but for now thanks so much for watching my name is espresso i'll see you guys later take care and peace